in this audio, I'm going to teach you how you can hack the law of attraction to force the universe to give you the best relationship, loving mate, passionate relationship that you can possibly create now to so listen in. Yes, you can hack the law of attraction to create that relationship that is loving, joyful, peaceful, kind, good, faithful and loyal, passionate, exciting, long term. You can create long life commitment and marriage. You can create the family of your dreams with them. You can create an outstanding, terrific, mind-blowing relationship that is nurturing and amazing. You can create a loving relationship where you would not want to change a thing. And you could come up with any words that describe the relationship you desire and hack the law of attraction to make it happen for you in record speed. And yes, you can use physical descriptions such as attractive. Your relationship of the individual that you can create can be good looking, sexy, fit, muscular, you can come up with any physical attributes that you would desire in that person. But the correct way to do this is to have the following understanding of how you use the law of attraction to force the universe to respond with the best answer. To illustrate, let's consider that Mike wants a mate in a loving, fulfilling relationship. There are three potential choices he can go about making the selection. First, in his limited knowledge, Mike examines his prospects. He thinks of all the attractive potential mates in his immediate vicinity, work friends, Friends of friends, friends of family, people at social clubs, bars, the gym, etc. He may have written the list and narrowed it down to the best 20. At this point, he may start dating one, two, or three at a time. He will have to go through much work, examination, and observation to see and decide who will be the best choice. This is how most people choose their mate. There's nothing wrong with that process, but it is not the best process to go about it at all. The second way Mike can do it is like this. Mike, in his limited knowledge, acknowledges that he doesn't know what he doesn't know and therefore decides to leave the decision up to the universe or God to choose the best from the 20 prospects. Very wise indeed since it will save him excessive time and effort to pick one all by himself. The universe then goes to work and, in an instant, examines each of the 20 individuals' energetic blueprints and concludes that Jasmine is a much better vibrational match for Mike than the other 19. What did God or the universe examine? What questions and details did the universe consider relevant to the selection process. Considering that a million different outcomes could exist, 
The universe in a much higher realm examines every possible scenario with each individual. The universe scrutinizes qualities, likes, dislikes, parents, family members, friends, goals, dreams, thought patterns, intentions, past, DNA impressions, and patterns, possible future outcomes, etc. The entire energetic blueprint is examined in connection with Mike's blueprint. And the best choice thus has been selected, Jasmine. It could be that Mike is an intellectual and needs support in the organizational skills department. Thus, the universe observes that Jasmine is a clean and organized person who dislikes others trying to rearrange her immediate space. Therefore, she is picky about how, when, and where everything must get done. These qualities will complement Mike's qualities. Also, the universe examines that Jasmine lacks basic common sense, confidence, and study habits that will improve her social life and career. Thus, with his intellect, Mike knows what books she should read and helps her develop the skills and confidence needed to improve other aspects of her life. An infinite number of details must be considered, and with our limited conscious awareness, we could not even come close to considering them. The universe will examine past and future, length and width, height and depth, and make the best choice. The best part is that infinite intelligence will decide an infinitely faster way than we could. And is not time more valuable than gold itself? As fascinating as we may find the second way to achieve what we want, it is still only the second best. This is the third and best way. Since we have acknowledged, hopefully, that we do not know what we do not know, then the best course is for Mike not to consider the 20 people on his original list. Why? Because he doesn't know what he doesn't know. But what he does know is that he knows someone or something that knows best. God or the universe is left with limited options when asked to examine only 20 out of all the possibilities on the whole planet. Maybe five months from now, by improving Mike as a person, the universe can match his frequency to Veronica, whom he will bump into at the subway station once Mike's training has been completed. Thus, he will be the best person he can be to become Veronica's mate. Or maybe at some point, Mike will travel to a distant country where he will bump into and meet the best possible choice from all the outcomes. From the beginning of this process, Mike should ask for a mate that the universe or God thinks is the best for him. This awareness releases all pressure and stress and allows the infinite universe to determine the best possible outcome that will make Mike and his mate the happiest. That is true wisdom. But let me give you a warning here. Do not do this the following way. And consider this to be the worst way to do this process. Mike likes famous actresses Anna de Armas and Scarlett Johansson and wants to marry them by next week. He waits one week and sees that it doesn't happen. 
Mike is discouraged, and he has proven himself that the law of attraction is absolute BS, and people have fallen for a scam. Mike feels much wiser now that he dodged that bullet. Yes, that was hyperbole. But it is a warning not to become too hyper-specific about your targets. Think about this. Person A wants to be with person B badly. They desperately use the law of attraction to manifest it. Person B has no interest in person A and desires person F. Person B is happy regardless of not being with person F. The law of attraction brings person G, who has been calculated to be similar to person F, for person B. Law of attraction knows person M will be a better match for person A. But person A has now lowered their energy because person A thinks manifesting doesn't work. Person A is no longer a match for M. Law of attraction is now waiting for person A to feel better about themselves. A much better way to define your dream relationship would be in the following way. Being hyper-specific when it comes to relationships will most of the time be counterproductive. It is better to be slightly general when defining what you desire to experience. You are not that smart and you don't know what you don't know. The universe can read in an instant exactly the kind of person who will give the best experience. This is why it is better to define your desired relationship the following way. Say to the universe something like this. Make it happen so I get a relationship that is loving, joyful, fun, kind, good, peaceful, remarkable, phenomenal, outstanding, mind-blowing, passionate, loyal, faithful, exciting, nurturing, clean, complimenting, among other words. Sit down and think about what feelings you desire to experience in this relationship. Also, do you desire long-term commitment and marriage? Ask for that. Another way you can expedite this process is by helping others get what they want most. Some people have relationships left and right without a worry in the world, but they suck at making money. If that person were to help people who are desperate for a relationship are successful at making more money than most, they themselves will receive what they want most. Does that make sense? Can we see the dangers of making decisions with our limited knowledge? We see it daily in this world with all its pain and suffering. And yes, you can use this same principle to improve your overall health and attract monetary abundance or things that you desire. These words at this point should resonate with us in the sense that we are not forfeiting all self-determination, but that the best way to live is by choosing to be the best we can become. Since we have an infinite source of wisdom at our disposal, why waste trying to consciously make all decisions by trying to weigh all the factors? The best part is that we are still deciding and delegating the hard part of the work to someone better equipped to make such decisions. That in itself is the best decision. First and foremost, you must understand that the laws of physics tell you that life 
is a merciless mirror. This suggests that energies you don't trust show you a non-resolved part of the self. The law of magnetic attraction is also the law of magnetic rhythm. It forces the energetic environment to match as closely as possible. If you happen to be in a good place where you are vibrating high and feeling good, say a 9 on a scale from 1 to 10, and you come in contact with an individual in whatever environment, and they are negative at a 4 on this scale, the law of attraction through hypnotic rhythm of the environment will force a subconscious action among the parties in play to match an energy. Thus your 9 will go down to 6.5 and they will be forced up to a 6.5. Be aware of your surroundings. Love yourself first. It is love others as you love yourself. You can only love to the extent that you love yourself. Others will only love you to the extent that you have loved yourself. This may mean that this person you are with is loving themselves through you. If they drain you, it is because you are raising them. So they like themselves better by being around you. Or could it be the other way around? And it's a hard pill to swallow. But people confuse being in love with loving themselves through others. How can you know for sure? Do you feel insecure when they're not around? Are you always trying to get validation and can't seem to get enough of it? Do you always exert energy to please the other because you are afraid if you don't, that they will walk away? Are you always thinking about the worst case scenario? Does it seem like their love is a fix and you cannot seem to function without their presence or constant validation? This takes real hyper awareness. You must create a system that builds you up as a person. This awareness is the best perception that will do it for you. It is a protocol, not a quick fix pill, but it is, in my opinion, the shortest route from where you are to where you want to be. And here's one final lesson on how you can hack the law of attraction to force the universe to bring you that relationship that you desire. And that is this. Sometimes, and I promise, this will happen to most of you listening to this. Because you want it so badly, and you are desperate for it, you're going to be forced to pivot away from it. From what? From that desire. You must remove the burning desire to experience this thing. If you want it too badly, this will lower your vibration and create resistance. Get to the point where you don't care. Even better, get to the point where you don't even want it. And it does not matter if you don't ever get the relationship you want. Be genuine about it though. And here's an exercise. Write down your worst case scenario. You can also exaggerate the worst case scenario. Think how you will never meet anyone ever and that you will die alone. Or think about how someone could come and be with you, but then cheat on you with 10 different people at the same time. 
but you don't care. Can you get to that place? Can you imagine this factually happening and run this scenario? Run these very negative scenarios in your mind and make an attempt to feel what it would be like if these things happen. Experience these things in your mind. Run the feelings until you don't feel them no more or they don't feel as bad. This simple exercise will help you release the deep desire or your awareness where you feel like you want it really bad. That that state of being is counterproductive and factually pushes it away. And one of the reasons is this. Explore if you're happy being alone or if you suffer in solitude. You want to get to a place where you are fine with your own company without the companionship of others, whether there's friends or a romantic relationship. Here you are being encouraged to consider that being alone with your own thoughts and feelings, it's a way to force yourself to quantify and examine the negative thoughts and feelings and fears that may be saturating your mind and your thinking processes that are in fact vibrating and resistant that relationship that you desire. Consider that thought. Make it a point to do that. I mean it. This one point is really important. If you want it really badly, you have to pivot away from the desire. And by doing this, it doesn't mean that you are giving up on your desire and that you are choosing not to have it. Instead, what you're doing is you are becoming self-centered. You are centering your thinking and your emotions into your being, into yourself, so that you are not feeling like you're not the thing you want to be without that thing that you desire the most. Because this applies to everything else as well. One way you can see and check if there's internal conflict within your being is observe successful relationships and ask yourself, are you envious and do you have jealousy and bitterness of other people enjoying these things? This is a reflection of your internal struggles and your frequency needs to be corrected. You must come to a different conclusion about who you are in relationship to what you desire. And these points are things for you to consider and think about and ponder over. Don't listen to this just once. Go back. Listen to this again. If you have paper, take notes of highlights and things that resonate with you so that you may do the mental critical thinking work that is necessary for you to correct your thinking. I would also encourage you that you go to Amazon and purchase my books, Hack the Law of Attraction, The Quantum Code to the Mastermind System, Blueprint for Immortality, The Quantum Code for Life Secrets to Success, and Life is a Game, The Quantum Code for Life's Principles for Success. 
these books will help you to refine your thinking, to dig deep into your thoughts and your emotions, hidden DNA patterns that are vibrating, creating chaotic karma and preventing from what you desire to be manifest and in fact manifesting the opposite. You can hack the law of attraction to force it to give you what you desire. But this is a mental game. You must know how to master your mind and you must know how to master your energy. This is the end of this riff. And if you desire to hack the law of attraction to make your dreams and desires a reality, I highly encourage you that you continue to listen to the Quantum Code for Life Secrets to Success by pressing that button and subscribe to my channel. Also, go ahead and put a like on the video so you can continue to be notified of all my fresh content. Consider being one of the first to comment by sharing what you like best so that fresh knowledge gets locked into your mind. I thank you for tuning in. And remember that you are an engine geared into the wheelwork of the universe whose influence extends into infinite distance.